Hey guys, Luke here, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of my West Tigers Rugby League Live Through Career Mode. Now, to start off this episode, you can go and see uh, we're just doing all these little sponsor things, and we will be taking a look at our, uh, our team as a whole and see how everyone is overall is. So, Granville, our star player who we've brought in this year, Tedesco and Woods also are uh, uh, really, really good players. Um, Sam Thide getting right up there, but we do have a lot of top, top players who I would consider to be, uh, you know, top-class players, world-class even, uh, so if that's really a word for, you know, an NRL team, or NRL players, considering not much of the world plays it, but I think you understand the gist of what I'm trying to say here. We've got a lot of good players, we've got a lot of young, you know, young players as well there, who um, could, uh, you know, have a lot of potential. Um, unfortunately, like, Tamari Martin and Jeremy Marshall King haven't really progressed much at all, which was a little bit annoying, but I suppose they haven't played any reserve grade. There's been people in front of them at all times, but um, this year, we take a look at David Clemmer right here. He's uh, one of our star signings. Um, Elijah Taylor, another one who really um, just shores up that lock position. We had Mike Cooper last year who did a pretty decent job, but overall, it felt like a prop who was playing in that lock position, and I'd rather have a second rower um, come into that position, and obviously, Jay Granville was someone who we talked about before. He's our big marquee signing, really, and um, the whole position, ever since Robbie Farrell left. Wasn't really sure on now. Uh, we did sign Granville, you know, midway through last season, and since then, like, uh, Cameron King sort of came along very, very well, and I wasn't really sure exactly what sort of rotation we're going to be doing. Did we need, um, did we need Cameron King on the bench? Did we not need him? But I think, uh, we'll probably find out soon, but I think we'll find Granville's, um, stamina isn't really the best, but uh, enough of talking about the team itself. I mean, obviously last year we had a disappointing uh, way to end the season, but we had a great opening to the season because we won the Auckland Knights, so we're looking to go back to back. However, I don't want to risk any sort of injuries. I thought we'll send over, a, you know, a half-hearted sort of side. I didn't really care this time. Like I said, we won it last time. If we can win it for a second time in a row, that'd be, that'd be great. That'd be incredible. But it's not really a priority of mine. Um, and taking on the Raiders first up, take a look at their side. They have a pretty good side. Us, on the other hand, got a lot of players who don't usually play. Um, but yeah, you never know. Uh, something I found out on Win One Take On when I did it, it might be better to have specialised um, specialized Orca Nines players. It's just, it might seem a bit dumb, but, you know, it's, it pace is everything in this game mode. I think pace and the ability to, you know, just be a bit mobile. But um, Lachlan Croker here, up against his old club, he's someone that we brought in in the offseason. Um, to be a backup halfback, and uh, you know he's done he done pretty well just then. He got the ball, went backwards a little bit. I don't really um understand the going backwards, but you can see we're offloading at will, throwing those little short passes, which is um a bit dangerous, but it's you know it's working for us at the moment. And Kevin Aguama, who we threw in the fullback position, no Tedesco uh, for this tournament, um, but we did take Kevin Aguama, who can more than capably fill in. Uh, he's he's very very handy player, Kevin Aguama, very very versatile. It is he is our utility backline player, and he does well in every position. But um, in that fullback role, he's, he's quite deadly. And we saw when he filled in um, last season in the finals when Tedesco was um, out suspended, he uh, filled in beautifully at that fullback position, especially scoring tries in that sort of fashion that he scored that first try. Unfortunately, we couldn't get um, a bonus point, which is uh, a little bit annoying. But, I mean, I'd rather just take the try than try and risk a bonus point and, you know, screw it up. But right here, straight off um, the kickoff for the second half, we sort of went for a short kickoff because why not? But um, that little... I don't know, intercept, it was kind of looked like a knock-on, really, but we see here, uh, Mappy Sony, I don't know exactly who he is, I think he might have been someone we signed from, um, the Warrior, he's, he is quite young, I think he's about 75 rated, from memory, uh, he seems like a pretty good prospect, but Mitchell Moses is someone who's, uh, always been a prospect for us, um, a lot of people have said, play Mitchell Moses in, um, the 5-8 position, uh, move Curtis Siren into lock and all that sort of stuff, but really, Moses just didn't feel up to it at the moment, he's, Hasn't got much pace or whatever for someone small, and he's just not a great tackler. And I felt when I used him, he wasn't that great. But, I mean, he's had a great start to this Auckland Lions um, comp, and you never know. I will reward players for good form, I think. But, uh, you know, in saying that Curtis Hewitt hasn't fell out of form in the 5-8 position. So, uh, I don't want to go against my word. Um, but, yeah, we end up picking up a pretty comfortable win against the Raiders. Um, uh, one thing I will say is it's really, really annoying to have to come up against the same teams every year. Um, in the Auckland Islands. I believe they're working on a patch. I think I saw patch notes that they're talking about um, where the Auckland Islands will be randomised after the first season. The only problem is that patch will probably never, ever come out. It seems like it's taking forever. Uh, but yeah, moving on to the second game, taking on the Titans again. And they do have some really, really good players. Josh Hodgson's there. I um, see Kane Elgy on the bench there. But Kieran Foran is uh, really, really good in this game. Um, he's quite fast and breaks a lot of tackles. So we definitely got to watch out for Kieran Foran. And 
It would have been nice if we could have uh, picked up Kieran Foran and ourselves here. But right from the kickoff, I don't know who it is down the wing there. Maybe it's Kevin Gordon or someone. Maybe it's Anthony Don. Didn't know exactly who it was, but they uh, hit the edges really, really quickly. And uh, thankfully, I think it was Naguama came over and uh, got them. Couldn't force them over the sideline or anything, but and we ended up wrapping them up, which was um, which was pretty good and it was pretty quick as well. But um, yeah, just off the back of that, we won a penalty, and then uh, we see John Silla, uh, who hasn't played any first grade for us, but he's um playing in the Auckland Nines, like I said, we had a, a pretty rotated sort of squad, um, or not rotated sort of squad, but we had a pretty weak squad, it's pretty much our B slash C team, with like Kevin O'Gaim and a few other players thrown in the mix there, but um, yeah, John Silla is someone who I picked, or I didn't pick him up, but he was at the Bulldogs a few years ago, so I was well aware of who John Silla is, um, his big thing is his positioning and couldn't really tackle or whatever, but I remember picking him up in rugby league life too for all my size, because he's very cheap and he seemed to progress pretty well, and um, yeah, he seems to be progressing pretty well on this as well. I believe he's up to like 77 or 78, something like that. And uh, you'll be able to see at the start of the video exactly what he is. But he seems like a pretty decent player. Uh, only problem is he's been at the club for a little bit. And I don't know, I just feel like we've got better wingers coming through. But um, that was a nice little try he scored. And 7-0 is what we're, we're currently at. Um, but you can see here, I think it's Kira Foran on the ball. Um, he's wrapped up by um, Kevin Aguama there. But... They just make them lots of breaks the Titans, and you kind of feel eventually it's going to work out for them. And right here, Ryan James steps around one, and then he just steps around um, the Guamers there uh, as well. So Ryan James opens the scoring for the Titans. Fortunately for us, they don't score a bonus point, which may come in handy, uh, considering we, you know we've still got the one-point lead. We can sort of just hold on if needed, but I mean, you know, that was very, very disappointing to concede right on half-time. Uh, well, I mean, it was extremely disappointing, extremely annoying. I thought we are going to make it to half-time for sure, but obviously not. And, uh, you know, 7-6 rather than that 7-0 score. And it's a huge difference. It's, you know, you go from one point to, um, uh, you know, wh what we would have thought we'd be going in at half-time with a 7-point lead. And, you know, now it's only one point. But we've got to um, just get back on track here and uh, try and score and get back in front. But it doesn't really work out too well. Not for Loomis Pass. Uh, here's another one from the first grade squad who actually is playing. A few of those backline players are in there, but... Passes the ball straight to Josh Hodgson in the number seven, and um, he got knocked down. Uh, probably a knock on in real life, but obviously in this game it never is a knock on. So uh, he picked it up. He did have to palm off one, so he didn't have like an open run to the line, but he had a little bit of work to do. But you know, overall, in those sort of situations, they always just palm off the player. But we are looking to hit straight back. It's Kapai Murray, or whatever his name is. He is a winger. He is quite young. I believe he actually came from the Titans twenty. Uh, sorry, the Tigers twenty side uh, from maybe the first season or so. So um. Yeah, I was, I was pretty happy to um give him a, a bit of a run. I didn't have any um, didn't have any worries about that. But right here, pretty much the last chance. Um, we didn't realize exactly what the time was, but um, yeah, not for Luma. I thought there was a chance we could have went the length of the field, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. And we think the next play we just got wrapped up pretty easily. And yeah, a twelve to seven loss against the Titans. Uh, we don't lose too often in. Uh, Auckland Lions, and I think that might have been our first loss in the group stages. I mean, obviously we take on the same sides time after time, so. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably the first time Titans have ever beat us, even in uh, first grade. So, um, yeah, it's just it was quite disappointing to lose, but I mean, in the end, it's just nines. Now, looking at this Warriors side, they've pretty much gone all out. Uh, I did catch that they signed someone, but I forget what their name was um, by the time I've come around to say it. But, uh, yeah, they do have a pretty good side. They've got, yeah, all their big guns playing. Um, Summer Mentoring and, you know, Sean Johnson and a few of those sort of guys there. Uh, I didn't catch if... Um, Tim Tompkins is still on the side, but uh, you can see here for us, Kitty Glime and a very, very nice little kick return there, and uh, we will win a penalty there, you see Nofalum was in a dummy half ready to go, but they held on too long, and I think Nofalum would have jumped out of dummy half, who knows what would have happened, but Deloise Hoyter is in the gap there, what can he do, steps around one, but he is brought down by two players there, but uh, we've got a lot of, you know, we've got great field position, we've got a lot of space to work with, I'm not really sure what the players right up on the left are doing, um, or to the far, you know, to the far corner or whatever. They were, like, standing in line with the play. So, had we tried to come over that side, they would have been, you know, way out of position. Probably if we threw a pass, we would have had to do the animation where they run backwards. It's so annoying. But, um, yeah, thankfully, I think it was Jai Arrow, possibly, who ended up scoring. Uh, yes, it was Arrow who scored the bonus try straight under the post. So, that's pretty good. All it was was the change of direction, which is, you know, very overpowered. Everyone's aware of that. But, um, 7-0 against the Warriors. Uh, it's funnily enough, like, they're a side who I don't find, a, like, super hard on this game, but you can see right here, the Wolfman is going to go with what you would assume will be straight into the bonus zone, but for some reason, he just swerves last minute and goes right next to the bonus zone, so that was a, a bit of a what the fuck moment right there, I couldn't believe it, I was like, what is going on with this game, seriously, um, not a good look for the game, but um, 
yeah, I th it was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, anyways, like seven six, we still got the lead. That's the main thing. And you know, <laughs> funny enough, funny, uh, fun. Oh, I can't even pronounce the words. Funny or not, it has helped us out a lot. That um, you know, that Wolfman did that. And I didn't show it, but. They, uh, we gave away a penalty right in front, and they ended up taking a, a shot at two. Now, I should have showed that, but Sean Johnson just slotted it uh, from in front, so it's not a huge deal. Um, and yeah, while I was talking, trying to pronounce funny, I probably uh, should have been editing in um, the shot at goal, but not to worry. 8-7 is what they've got the lead now, and they're looking to you know put it to bed, really. They just run straight over top of one player. I think Moses came in um, to try and wrap up the other player, and they just passed it to the Wolfman on the wing there. And this time, he didn't have to worry about trying to... Uh, Get that bonus try. He just had to worry about getting the ball down. Now, thank you for us. They also miss uh, the try. Uh, the, sorry, they missed this goal. So we're still within a shot. Um, we do have to score, and we do have to keep the goal unless we score a bonus try. But um, yeah, we definitely is uh, still a chance here. But Kapoor Murray, or Kapoor Murray, I should say, he gets a late offload there, and that is it's over. And uh, the Warriors will pick up the victory, which is quite frustrating. I thought we could have scored there. Maybe if we had enough Luma or Kevin Aguilar in his usual position on the wing there, we probably would have ended up scoring that. But um, they had enough to come across and get uh, get that guy, that Murray guy. He uh, didn't have quite enough pace uh, for that wing spot currently. But you see that surprisingly, uh, we still will be progressing through to the knockout rounds. And it wasn't something that I was expecting, especially with, you know, we didn't really play very well. But... I suppose that first performance, a lot of the games were just one-point losses or, you know, five-point losses or whatever. So, you know, I was pretty happy to um, make our way through. But at the same time, I don't know if we're deserving. But we'll move on to the second day. Well, we're already on the second day of Lock of Nine. So we'll be taking on the Bulldogs. So I'm expecting a tough game. That will be next episode. And it'll only be uh, that game next episode. Hopefully, we progress to uh, the finals. That'll be nice. But, um, yeah, we have to get through the Bulldogs first. And that's where the video is going to end. Hopefully, you did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at MrLukeMyT, face the page in the description below, and I'll see you for my next video. Bye, guys.